Okay, so uh, last week I was on uh, Bastion Radio, uh, a little interview. Um, I, I liked it. Um, uh, Mike uh, seems like a very nice guy. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Um, but one of the concerns he, he, he communicated was that the way in which, um, you know, uh, the trolls, people like myself, are uh, putting the information across isn't, um, isn't, isn't very nice. Um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sometimes uh, it crosses over into personal attacks, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and take that into account uh, at least in this video. Um, on Sunday, Guy Taylor was on uh, um, a program uh, interviewed by Mike, and um, he made some claims. So I'm gonna try and um, respond to them in uh, the nicer way that Mike uh, is communicating or, or requesting, I guess. So let's put, let's play the clip. So if we talk about the bank, now what is the bank, the bank situation, which is what a lot of Jeff, what Jeff was talking about, and a lot of that is he said, she said, we said. Uh, you either believe Tom or you believe the bank. Now Tom's made a sworn statement uh, about his facts. Yeah. And um, there's never been a competent witness called to say otherwise. Okay, so that that is Guy Taylor. Um... One of the points I want to respond to, um, Guy claims that uh, the arguments about the mortgage uh, boil down to uh, he said, she said. Um, now, now, there's a very simple response to that. Um, uh, this is from uh, the, the Godspark uh, decision or judgment, whatever. Uh, paragraph 30. Now, here's the thing. Bradford and Bing Bingley... Uh, put out um, the account statements showing that uh, Sue Crawford, Mrs. Crawford, Tom's wife, uh, was paying the endowment policy uh, with uh, Phoenix Group uh, between 1988 up to 1991, in June. After that, there's no more payments. And then a year later, the policy was canceled, which is what happens when you stop paying a policy. Now, that's not he said, she said. That's the bank provided uh, evidence, and Tom did not rebut it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but then what happens then? Somehow they th then pursue that process, but of course no fees have been paid. Mm. And, and we've not completely unraveled this. But what's going on is when you, go, when you then go and examine the court file, you first of all see there has been a case created. But when you look at the end, there's been no judgments and no warrants in that case. And when you look through the, the, the menu of what's gone on, you'll see that there's been no fees paid. Right. And of course, you're entitled, you're entitled to establish that there's been fees paid, because if there hasn't been fees paid, there's been no case against you. Yeah. Okay, and that's uh, Guy Taylor uh, bringing up his uh, fee argument. Now, um, I think the only question I, I was able to ask Mike during the interview is whether or not he had read uh, the God, Godsmark uh, decision. And um, see, this this fee issue is part of why you know uh, I asked that question um, because pretty much every argument uh, that's coming from Guy Taylor and Tom Crawford was addressed in the uh, Godsmark decision. Um, but let's get into this fee thing uh, again. Back to the Godsmark decision. If you go to paragraph fifty four through. Uh, 58, it explains why uh, the fee argument doesn't work. Uh, here we go. Uh, Mr. Crawford says that there is no record of any fee being paid for the commencements of these proceedings. The proceedings were issued online by a PCOL, or a piece, p, uh, possession claims online. Without the fee, there is no valid claim. Right. That's uh, Guy Taylor and Tom Crawford's argument. This, in paragraph 55, is the judge's response. I do not agree. I would not expect a fee paid through the online claim system to appear on Caseman. The system is largely automated and the claim form will not be generated unless fees criteria are met. 
there. That is the response and the, you know, explanation for why the guy's argument is wrong. If the, if the bank, uh, Bradford and Bingley, had not paid the fees, there would have not been, uh, there would not have been any claim form. The very fact that there is a claim form is proof that they paid the fees. Um, I, I don't know how, how much uh, simpler it can be. Uh, it, you, you have to pay first, and, and then it, the claim is created. You know, uh, there's no way to, to file a claim without paying the fees, as, as Guy Taylor argues. And uh, more importantly is the point on paragraph 58. Proceedings are not invalidated by failure to pay a fee. The, the underlying, all right, there's two things here. One, Guy Taylor is arguing that there was no fee paid. That's not true, as explained in paragraph 55. But more importantly, the underlying argument that Guy Taylor is making that without a fee, the proceedings are invalid is also false. The proceedings are not invalidated by failure to uh, pay a fee, blah, blah, blah. Look, now, now this is why people are concerned when they see that Tom Crawford uh, is still relying on the advice of Guy Taylor. Um, here is Guy still repeating something that was uh, explained to him in May was false. Now, you know, I guess there's two possibilities here. Guy did not read uh, the judgment, which would be incredibly negligent on his part if he's claiming to be the uh, legal representative of the family. Or he he lacks the you know reading comprehension to read a simple court judgment, in which case he shouldn't be out there giving the Crawfords legal advice. Or you know if if you really want to get um, as conspiratorial, uh, you could you could assume that guy knows that what he's saying is false, and is actively lying to you know whatever audience. He's, um, you know, he's addressing. Uh, but but this is, this really is the problem here. We, uh, to date, uh, Guy Taylor's advice has resulted in Tom Crawford losing his house, uh, in Tom Crawford being incarcerated, in his son being incarcerated, and uh, there's no there's no accountability. There's no there's no realization that, that this is not working. There's no, there's no backlash against uh, Guy Taylor for what he's done. I mean, he hasn't even you know, ap apologized or anything. But more, 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 to the, more, more disturbing is that in a, at another point in the interview, he says that he was helping another woman with uh, facing an eviction and uh, used the fee argument in her case. You know, now, now, at least, at least from my perspective, this is what you know is so you know interesting and attractive about uh, this whole situation. It's that you know, first uh, Guy Taylor loses his houses in, in Bodham Manor, following this you know bad legal advice. And he goes to Tom Crawford and quote unquote helps him and Tom Crawford loses his house. Now after those failures, now they're helping some other woman how to uh, with her eviction case and she'll probably end up losing her house because the, the underlying fee argument that they're relying on doesn't work in court.